Snow Tracks is sponsored by Ski Do, Polaris Terrain Domination, and by FXR Racing Full Throttle Addiction. It's undisputable that the biggest manufacturer market share wars are happening right now at high altitude in the snowmobile industry. Who's on top? who's gaining momentum, and what technology is propelling our sport forwards. The Skidoo Summit has been changing the game since its introduction in the 90s, and year-to-year -year updates, as well as huge revolutionary changes, have pushed it to the top of the heap, fighting it out year-to-year -year at points month-to-month -month with Polaris. So what makes the newly revamped Summit XM so great? Besides the changes that make an XM what it is, by far the coolest news and the biggest advancement for this season would have to be the T3 package. T3 is more than just an upgrade package. T3 stands for years of dedication and hard work realized in a totally new to the industry format directly from the manufacturer. What once was a custom order from a custom fabrication shop is now available from your local Skidoo dealer with both warranty and financing options. What I'm referring to is the combination of both extended track length like we've never seen before, as well as an impressive industry first huge lug depth that's gonna push the bounds of showroom capabilities. Offered in both 163 and 174 inch length, the T3 truly stands for the three inch lug depth. You might wonder why three inches is so much of a departure from 2.5 that we all know. Truth is, stock slides can't physically fit a three inch lug. To do this, you need to lower the chain case to accept the incredible clearance, and that requires structural changes to the physical size and placement of the chain case, as well as the location of the front arm mount. While a 174 inch track length, as well as an industry first three inch lug is gonna get you places that you never thought possible, the truth is the weight savings of the T3 is just as epic. While bigger is better, heavier is not, Skidoo set out to build a no-compromise T3 package where only capability would increase. To do this, they use a custom 163 and 174 inch Powder Max 3 flex edge track. Utilizing the shorter fiberglass rods, the T3 still has T-motion in the rear skid to allow the two degrees of suspension roll. However, many of the stock parts have been changed out for lighter weight options. They also utilize a new slim slot cutout in four locations per row to reduce weight in the track. The RAS2 front suspension has been adapted for its excellent weight savings characteristics. As well, heat exchangers have been optimized to shed pounds. When it all boils down, the end result is a 163 inch T3 that weighs the same as a 154 inch X package. And get this, the King of the Hill 174-inch T3 is able to tip the scales at the same weight as a 163-inch X package. This truly provides the rider with a no-compromise upgrade and realizes weight reduction of substantial proportions. The technology that goes into this type of a diet is not your average run-of-the-mill type losses. This is technology at work. The dry weight of the 174-inch T3 is just 464 pounds. That is incredibly low weight when you consider that this mountain goat has such a big track on it. And you also have to consider the fact that it's got a three inch powder max. After spending a good amount of time on the T3 last season with Carl Kuster, as well as riding a production unit late in the season in West Yellowstone, I'm a believer in the T3 technology. While either of the T3s are a razor sharp blade in the hands of a professional, the benefits to average mountain riders is what I was able to truly sink my teeth into. I'm not a professional mountain rider, but I have a lot of opportunity to spend seat time with the pros. And the tips that guys like Carl Kuster and Brett Rasmussen give me work way better on the T3. I found the extra track length and lug gave me the flotation I needed to get places only the pros seem to be able to maneuver. I work less and am able to play more because that reduced weight keeps the T3 from trenching or diving. The T-Motion allows the T3 to still get over on its edge with great ease, and the newer XM bodywork holds an impressive line when side hilling. Drawbacks? Yeah, there's none here. Even if the T3 increased weight, it would still be worth it. But considering there is no weight penalty, and it adds huge benefits for all types of riders, it's a simple choice. T3 
is the future. Snow Tracks is sponsored by SnowmobileInQuebec.com. This winter, experience snowmobile heaven. This next story has recently been the cause of some seriously heated debates at the Snow Tracks World Headquarters. Where the three of us Lesters tend to agree on most things, in this case, none of us agreed at all. So what's been causing all this tension recently? In a word, crossovers. Or more specifically, the intended purpose and differences between Skidoo and Polaris crossover models. Here's the thing, the word crossover is a joke. It means nothing these days because it can literally mean anything. From a Polaris Axis Switchback Pro S to a Skidoo Backcountry X, there are so many different models labeled crossovers, we just don't know what it means anymore. So I thought we'd break down these sleds that are causing all this confusion in the hopes that, if nothing else, you can understand where we feel them lining up in terms of on and off trail performance. If you're planning on spending the majority of, if not all your time on the trail, we can't think of a better platform for you than the Switchback Pro S. Its longer track bridges bumps for a better ride and produces excellent traction and unbelievable corner-to-corner -corner acceleration. But why is this thing called a Switchback? A Switchback is supposed to be a crossover sled, right? But the Pro S, with its 1.25 lug, 137-inch track, is not designed for off-trail. Confused? Eh, don't be. The important thing to understand is that Switchback does not mean crossover. It means 137-inch track. The Pro X models are labeled Big Bump Sleds and are designed to be ridden in ditches and in other rough conditions. They come with a 1.75 lug track and are excellent off-trail. On the trail though, the additional ride height and subsequent increase in center of gravity combined with a lighter sway bar seriously affect handling, most specifically level cornering. Inside ski lift is definitely a problem. What does confuse things though is that Polaris lists their 144 Assault as a switchback. It's got an RMK skid, 144 inch track with a 1.375 lug. Its ride is, let's say, unpleasant and it doesn't handle that great on the trails. But off trail, it's a dream to ride and it can go just about anywhere. Now let's take a look at what Skidoo considers to be a crossover sled. Arguably, they started this class with the original Renegade, which in its day was designed to go on and off trail with equal competence. Now, you have more choices than you have fingers and toes, all under the Renegade heading. But again, Renegade doesn't mean crossover anymore. It simply signifies a 137 inch track. The Renegade X includes a 15 by 137 inch with a 125 lug. Shocks are the more trail-oriented KYB Plus R's up front, and the R-Motion rear skid is fantastic. Though it's labeled a Renegade, there really isn't anything about this sled that screams crossover. In the minds of all of us here at Snow Tracks, we think it's really more of a trail performance sled with a longer track. But what about the XRS package? It can be ordered with either a 125 or 1.5 log track and comes equipped with full-on, fully adjustable KYB piggybacks up front. Our motion in the rear is pure suspension perfection as usual. The XRS package has traditionally been targeted at big bump riders who can make full use of its high-end shocks. Still, is this a crossover? Sure, it can go off trail, and with a 1.5 lug, it's pretty capable. But if you ordered yours with a 125, what makes it any different than an X package? Our conclusion is that this sled, while capable with a 1.5 off trail, isn't likely to spend much of its life there. It's more of a ditch banger than it is a crossover. If you do know you're going to spend considerable time off trail, you might lean towards Skidoo's Backcountry Renegade X model. As its name suggests, it actually is targeted at off trail riding. This is perhaps the truest crossover sled we'll talk about today. Its chassis and suspension are nearly identical to the X model, but it includes a higher bar riser and a 16 wide by 175 paddle track. It does handle well on the trail, but it's supremely capable off trail as well. We think this is what a crossover should be. This is a lot of information to digest all at once, but the point I'm trying to make is simple. A 137 inch track does not make for a crossover. 
Skidoo's for Renegade X and Polaris' Switchbacks are simply longer track trail sleds. A Renegade XRS can go off trail, but is better suited to rough situations on harder pack surfaces. A Switchback Pro X is great in the bumps and decent in deeper conditions at the expense of its on-trail handling. A Renegade Backcountry really is a crossover sled that does equally as well on or off the trail. A Switchback Assault is a sled that should be reserved for people who know they're going to spend the majority of their time in the woods. So, how can this information help you when it comes time to buy a sled? Well, here at Snow Tracks, we hope it highlights one important point. You can't pick a sled based on name or classification. You have to take a look at what it is or isn't good at and pick a sled whose strengths match your riding style. Just because you're an aggressive rider doesn't mean a Pro X or XRS are the right sled for you. Closed captioning of Snow Tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers, the cornerstone of every adventure. Mountain domination is at the peak of its awareness in the snowmobile industry, and Polaris has been pushing the limits year to year with one goal in mind, to become king of the mountain. In 2011, Polaris introduced an insanely light Pro RMK 155 that tipped the scales at a mere 431 pounds. To do this, they didn't just have to rethink the way a snowmobile was ridden, they had to rethink the way it was made, right down to the production line. Utilizing some very unique technology, they were able to shed pounds while still retaining the strength required for mountain abuse. While 431 pounds set the industry into a frenzy, the truth is the engineers at Polaris were not satisfied, and since 2011, the latest iteration has shed even more pounds. The latest version of the Pro RMK 155 is a mere 417 pounds, and to get to this level of weight reduction took another level of both commitment in engineering as well as a significant investment into tooling from Polaris, as this type of technology had never been used on production sleds ever before. While weight has always been the name of the game in the mountains, how does Polaris plan to become king of the mountain, and what exactly does that entail for their company? More than just weight, it has to be agile, able to be put on edge with ease, able to turn out of a gnarly steep descent or carve an incredibly long side hill to get you to the pockets of powder only dreams are made of. And possibly, most importantly, it has to be strong, able to jump, drop, and tear up the powder day after day, year after year, with the least downtime. Raw is a word that Polaris has been using since 2011, and raw is what's been helping Polaris get to the peaks time and time again. Raw is essentially the least amount of weight with the most amount of strength. The raw RMK chassis uses narrowed up tunnel cooling extrusions that both reduce weight and become part of the tunnel structure. Powder track running boards remove 50% of the material on the surface of the running board and allow for complete elimination of snow buildup, while still keeping strength thanks to extruded aluminum and bonded cast tunnel mounting lugs. Possibly one of the coolest integrations on the Pro RMK is the use of some very specific and special lightweight material that you would typically only find on extremely custom builds. To keep the Pro RMK both light and agile, engineers integrated a carbon fiber overstructure. This departure from the normal aluminum spar or pyramid design has resulted in a large part of the weight reduction while increasing chassis rigidity by 300%. Now that's king of the mountain type technology. When it comes to putting power to the ground, a chain case has been the norm for most snowmobiles in the past decade. But when you want to be king of the mountain, the norm just isn't good enough. The quick drive, low inertia drive system is a departure from conventional chain case thinking. Polaris being masters of innovation are the first manufacturer to offer this type of drive system from the factory. Essentially the removal of the chain case housing, oil, gears, tensioner, and chain itself have allowed a huge reduction in weight. The new system uses a maintenance-free motorcycle-style drive belt that does not require a tensioner or oil. This, along with a lighter drive shaft, brake disc, and caliper, result in 21% less rotational inertia and allow the rider to feel five pounds less effort when carving the sled side to side. So what are the fruits of Polaris's labor besides providing some of the highest quality and lightest weight snowmobiles in the industry? Well, I'm glad you asked. On the Rimsha Hill Climb Circuit, Polaris won 10 of the 12 Pro Class Season Points titles, including all four stock and all four modified. 
add to that, in each of those classes, Polaris racers finished not just first, but first, second, and third. At all events, Polaris averaged a 96% winning rate in the stock classes, as well as an 85% win rate at the King of the Hill Pro Class titles. Now you think that's impressive, add to it this. At the Hill Climb Sports premier event at Jackson Hole, the World Championship, Polaris won every King of the Hill title, as well as 10 of the 12 Pro Class titles. To dominate the mountain and be king, Polaris had to make many more changes than just what I've outlined today. And while not all RMKs come with every piece of cool technology I've showed you, every RMK has King of the Mountain DNA built in. And after you ride one, I know you're going to completely understand. Test Ride is sponsored by Princess Auto, the unique world of equipment, tools, and more. Improving on a snowmobile is a very hard thing to do in this day and age. The manufacturers are already bringing us incredible snowmobiles, and in the mountains, we're going places we never thought possible. The summit has been a huge success for Skidoo, taking the company and riders places they never thought possible, right off the showroom floor, with technology you would only expect to find on an aftermarket equipped sled. The past few years, since the inception of the original Rev chassis, has catapulted the summit to incredible heights. And for 2015, prepare to go higher. In the aftermarket mountain segment, longer length tracks and deeper lugs are the standard accessory if you want to go where no man has been before. But when it comes to the manufacturers, nobody ever ventures past 163. Well, until now that is, for 2015, Skidoo is offering the Summit T3 package on two Summit models, a 163 with a 3-inch lug track that weighs the same as the current 154, or the newly crowned king of the mountain, the 174. Yeah, the first in the industry 174-inch long shovel will come factory equipped on the Summit T3 174 next season and also feature the 3-inch lug depth. And get this, the 174 will weigh the same as the current 163. While the lug depth is impressive, the fact that the T3 packages tip the scales at the same weight as their smaller siblings is equally as impressive, because as we all know, power to weight in the mountains means everything. But maybe more appropriately is to say power to weight to track length. I'm pretty impressed to see just how much extra flotation helps to disperse the weight of the summit. While I would love to see the summit go on a little bit of a diet, adding the extra length and lug without any weight penalty is not a bad option either. It's evident right away that the 174 floats like a boat. I mean, you are going to take this snowmobile places that you should not go on a 163, and you will not think twice. The difference is measurable. Where I notice both the lug and length the most is in the short approach climbs, where you're forced into a quick ascent with little room to gain track speed. Previous summits would trench and require a lot of body English. With the 74, this is not so. For the most part, you can line it up and climb with greater ease, in many cases reducing throttle because of the incredible float, allowing you to precisely manipulate the sled and put it right where you need it. The 800 E-Tech was my biggest concern. I mean, when we heard about the T3 package, I figured that there'd be something like a 1000 E-Tech or a higher output 800 motor, but neither would be the case. But that's okay. To my surprise, the 800 E-Tech is still a beast even when harnessed to the 174 and rotating the 3-inch lug. While more power is always acceptable, the current setup is not disappointing. Would a bigger bore, stout power plant with 25 horsepower more make it even better? Well, I can't think of a sled that I'd say no to that. But for the time being, this motor and track package is capable of making its way to the number one position in the high-end mountain market. It's the culmination of many weight savings ventures that has allowed the Summit T3 174 to tip the scales at the same weight as last year's 63. Just like Polaris told us that ounces make pounds, Skidoo followed the trend and pulled weight from every location they could find to reduce weight. The new Raz 2 front end is truly more of a trail improvement in the handling department, but reduced weight, so it was adopted. The track features weight reducing cutouts in the middle of the track, along with shorter fiberglass rods. Due to the three inch track lug height, the chain case was lowered to allow clearance and the chain case received a reduction in weight along with the new exhaust package that features an ultralight silencer. It's no surprise that the Skidoo and Polaris mountain sleds are in a head-to-head -head battle. 
Polaris claims that they sell more in the mountains, but so does Skidoo. The T3 package will significantly change the way that you ride a Summit, and no doubt put pressure on Polaris for 2015. Is the Summit as easy to side hill as a Polaris? Well, if it's the T3 174, it's not any harder and allows you to work slowly across the face because of the huge flotation. This will no doubt be a big step forward for the Summit riders who have complained about the sled's tendency not to stick to the hill like the Polaris. For 2015, the Summit is going to change the game. And not just out on the hill, but on the dealership showroom floor, where Skidoo is going to be the first and only manufacturer to ever break 163-inch track length or go past 2.5 inches of lug. They're offering an aftermarket package for significant savings. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris Terrain Domination. Arctic Cat, share our passion. And by Go Ride Ontario, yours to discover. If you like this video, post a comment and tell us what you think. Then click on this link to subscribe to Snowtracks TV here on the YouTube channel.